Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. 
çalı. Ben bir kırsma kuzu kirket. Devam ediyor bu kirket. My horsey kirket. Spectacular room. Isn't it marvelous? It's really lovely. Yes, wow. very nice. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, mm. it's a really ancient room. You can really feel the age. Red, on which continent is the Zomwa River? Um, I think Correct. The leader of the Scottish government is named the first what? Uh, Minister. Oh, really? Very nice. Good job. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm Stoke, Henry. I'm Stoke. I've met Lockie and Gail and Linda are pretty Stoke. Very, very, very. Well done. Face the thoughts. I like Kurt's losing to my first ever Lazarus, but at the same time, very, very good team. On the doorstep of the bank, Gail going to the high opera. Yeah. It, it's all right. It feels okay. Oh, he's uh, next to company as always. See you next time on the Chase Australia. <laughs> Tonight, coronavirus panic. Thousands swamp Victorian hospitals and GP clinics as the Premier issues a dire warning. We'll need to ask Victorians to do things that we have never asked them to do before. The AFL preparing to play matches in empty stadiums. A Melbourne school shut down as Qantas grounds flights in what it calls a fight for survival. Italy in total lockdown, no one allowed to travel, public gatherings banned. Also Harry and Meghan in one last royal appearance before starting their new life. And hospitals under pressure over sky-high parking prices, hitting the sick. Live from our Melbourne headquarters, this is 7 News with Peter Mitchell. Good evening. We are now witnessing pandemic panic in Victoria with doctors at breaking point as thousands of people rush to GP clinics and emergency departments to be tested. The Premier is warning of extreme measures, including mass closures of schools and the cancellation of major sporting events. The AFL is bracing to play matches in empty stadiums. One school has already shut as the number of virus patients rises to 18. In Italy, the entire the entire country has been placed into lockdown. Melina Saras begins our coverage. This is Melbourne in a pandemic panic. The Alfred Hospital Emergency Department. People crouching in the corridors with face masks, desperate to know if they have coronavirus. There were queues outside Box Hill Hospital and at the Royal Melbourne Hospital, it stretched all the way down the road as nurses triaged worried patients inside the Premier issued a stern warning. We will need to take extreme measures. We will need to ask Victorians to do things that we have never asked them to do before. Mass closure of schools is possible and major sporting events cancelled. Now is not the time for those things, but that time will come. <laughs> Entire workforces could also be brought to a halt. All businesses from today need to make plans about how they'll enable people to work from home. Three more coronavirus cases were confirmed today, bringing Victoria's total to 18. A man in his 70s returned from Singapore on flight EK404 on March 6. He visited the South Melbourne market the same day and the Albert Park Hotel on March 7. A woman in her 50s lived with a man who returned on flight UA60 from the US on February 28. She's attended a cricket final in Baldwin North on March 8. And a man in his 70s arrived home from Los Angeles on flight VA24 on March 8. We will get to a point where there are so many cases in Victoria that the real measures that we need to put into effect are the social distancing measures. Doctors are begging for help. Many have run out of masks and they don't have gowns. This Chadston clinic turned away more than 50 patients this morning. Please, please, can we have protection? Can they get it out to us this week so that we can at least be safe? The health department says help is on the way, promising to deliver 54 million more masks. The number of staff working on the dedicated coronavirus hotline will be doubled after high demand shut it down this morning. Due to a technical issue beyond our control, this service is currently experiencing delays and we are unable to take your call at this time. 
Seven News has spoken with many GPs. They're pleading for the government to move coronavirus testing facilities away from major hospitals. Obviously, we're monitoring the demand. Uh, we've already rolled out seven, uh, and then may will be uh, a need to have more of them. We could see drive-through testing clinics in Victoria, like this one, set up in South Australia, as emergency departments struggle to cope. Oh, it's jam back in the corridors and all that. That many people, and they've all got the masks and all that on. Uh, and it's clogging up the emergency department. Still in our supermarkets, bizarre scenes as shoppers grab scarce supplies of toilet paper. This in a Melbourne Aldi. The message from the Premier, don't panic, but prepare. For what the experts tell us is not a, an if or if not, it's simply a matter of when. To cope with the influx of patients, the state government is calling on recently retired doctors, nurses and paramedics to put their hands up and return to work. Health officials are now closely monitoring the spread of community transmissions to help them decide when more drastic community measures are required. Mitch. Melina Saras in Parkville, thank you. The AFL is now preparing to play games in empty stadiums. Paul Dowsley has details from inside Marvel Stadium. Paul, the league says all games will go ahead, even if they don't have fans sitting in the stands. Mitch, it became very clear today that the AFL is not immune from the coronavirus. So with just nine days until the first game of round one, our stadiums might look like this, empty seats, with no one in the house. The roar of the crowd will be gone. Footy set to be played in silent, empty stadiums to stop fans spreading coronavirus. While it might get complicated, our game always finds a way. The league is determined that even though Victorians will fall victim, our great game won't. If mass gatherings are suspended, then we'll play games in stadiums with no crowds. CEO Gillan McLaughlin met with club presidents today, warning the move is set to inflict significant financial wounds on all 18 clubs, flowing down to grassroots. We're well prepared for um, whatever comes. We hope it's minimal. Now, obviously, we want our fans there supporting us as loud and uh, proud as possible, but uh, if it comes to that, then so be it. Fremantle Dockers player Sam Switkowski had flu-like symptoms after seeing a friend who'd been in China. He was tested and cleared. At this weekend's GP, they believe health is in the hands. What we'll do is make sure there's increased wash stations, hand sanitisation stations. Today, the long weekend continued for Carey Grammar students after a senior school teacher tested positive. Two and a half thousand students at their Q and Donvale campuses ordered to stay away until at least next Monday. We are uh, now uh, going through the process of mapping the spread of the potential or the potential spread of the virus within the school. 17 of Victoria's victims contracted the virus overseas and flew back into Melbourne, unaware they were positive until being tested here. One of them, who flew in from America with infected Turak doctor Chris Higgins, then gave it to his partner at home. She is patient 18, the first to catch it locally. It's also impacted Victoria Police. Two specialist officers are now in isolation because they might have been exposed to the virus on Saturday when they were with a person who may have had indirect contact with the carrier. And it's scared off Miley Cyrus. I came in like a She was headlining a bushfire relief concert at Albert Park this Friday night, but says it's now too risky. Paul Dowsley, Seven News. And the virus has hit the flying kangaroo with Qantas announcing unprecedented moves to battle what? plunging what? passenger numbers. The airline has slashed flights and grounded aircraft, saying it's now <laughs> in a battle for survival. <laughs> Alan Joyce was Australia's <laughs> highest paid chief executive, banking $24 million last year, but his salary is now suspended for three and a half months while Qantas fights to survive. His other executives are taking an immediate pay cut of 30%. And this will be a survival of the feathers. Qantas is bleeding money as coronavirus hits bookings. The airline will ground eight of its 12 Airbus A380s. It'll suspend the Melbourne-San Francisco route entirely. Seven of the 14 weekly flights to Singapore will go 
and Jetstar will suspend its direct flight to Bangkok from the 1st of May. Affected passengers can change flights free of charge. And we think this will rebound, and when the rebound happens, there will be a big increase in demand. Qantas has almost $3 billion in the bank, enough to avoid redundancies for six months, but not much longer. A drop in the global oil price is rare good news. Qantas expects to save $110 million on fuel. The oil price drop is flying through to drivers here. A dollar eighteen in Taylor's Lakes was Melbourne's cheapest today. The average fuel price across the city has come down 40 cents a litre in just two months. Experts give two reasons for this. Less demand from big markets like China because of coronavirus and a supply war between Russia and oil-making countries in the Middle East. A dollar a litre isn't far off for the first time in four years. It is possible. Uh, it's, it's not something that's very easy to predict, but it's, uh, it's certainly heading down. Australia signed a deal today with the US, allowing us to store emergency fuel supplies with them to be used in case of a global emergency or shortage. Share markets worldwide are taking another battering. Ours has lost 20% in three weeks, although a late rally today saw some of the damage reversed. Blake Johnson, 7 News. Our network finance editor, Gemma Acton, joins us from the Stock Exchange now. Gemma, where do you expect shares to go from here? Well, Peter, there's a lot riding on President Trump's stimulus package. There are certainly high hopes that it will be as major as promised. He's already indicated there'll be some help for casual workers and also possibly for small businesses. The US share market is set to open higher tonight. But if we do see these stimulus measures disappoint, there will be a sharp pullback. And whatever happens tonight in the US is going to play out tomorrow in our markets here. Longer term, until this virus comes under control, we can expect to see this bumpy ride continue. Peter. Okay, thanks, Gemma. Gemma Acton at the Stock Exchange. And Italy is now in total lockdown with all travel and public gatherings banned. The entire nation is being told to stay at home. One of the most vibrant countries on earth shut down. La sanità. The future of Italy is in our hands, says the Prime Minister. After days of spiralling cases and nearly 500 deaths, quarantine measures in northern Italy have been extended across the entire country. Travel is allowed only for work or emergencies. All public gatherings are banned, schools and universities closed. And Australia is now urgently reviewing its advice on travel there. We have done that obviously on the basis of uh, the growth in cases over the last 48 hours in particular and uh, with regards to uh, Italy's own decisions. Britain's Alicia Pasquini has already cancelled her Italian honeymoon. We don't see it getting better anytime soon. Um, so, yeah, might as well just call it and, and get over it. Israel is also imposing strict measures. Everyone who arrives in the country will have to go into isolation for two weeks, while Donald Trump's unveiled plans to help the US economy deal with the crisis. This was something that we were thrown into and we're going to handle it and we have been handling it very well. But he refused to answer questions about his own exposure. <laughs> In Greece, this week's Olympic flame lighting event will be done without the public. Ireland has cancelled its famed St Patrick's Day parades and California's Coachella Festival appears likely to move from April to October. The virus is now in 107 countries, claiming 4,000 lives, and in many areas, the worst is still a long way off. Laurel Irving, 7 News. An Australian couple on board a coronavirus-infected cruise ship is on dry land tonight after the Grand Princess was finally allowed under the Golden Gate Bridge to dock near San Francisco. Medical personnel greeted the ship with the sickest passengers taken off first. We're looking forward to going to quarantine or starting the quarantine period as quick as we can. So we're doing fine, still no symptoms and uh, looking good. That quarantine is likely to happen in Canada after at least 21 people on board tested positive. Pensioners and unemployed Australians could be in for a one-off payment as part of a government stimulus package to head off a recession. It's just one of the measures being planned. The Prime Minister is also calling on businesses to chip in with sick leave, even for casual staff. Staring at the threat of a virus-led recession, potentially greater than the global financial crisis, especially for Australia. Prime Minister Morrison asks big business to join the coronavirus fight. 
whatever you thought 2020 was going to be about, think again. The speech given just before the highest stakes meeting of Federal Cabinet's Budget Committee in more than a decade. The Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, key ministers in economics and health, advice from Treasury and the Prime Minister's own department, a war room designing a likely $10 billion stimulus to steady the economy. Keep people in jobs. Keep businesses in business. That's likely to involve a cash injection to get Australian spending, perhaps a short-term top-up of pension payments or unemployment benefits, though for now the government is denying talk of a one-off $400 gift for every pensioner. It needs to be big enough and fast enough to make a genuine difference. As well, the Industrial Relations Minister in talks with unions and employers about what happens when coronavirus arrives in a workplace. How do infected casual workers, those with no sick pay, isolate themselves but still pay bills? The government is preparing a range of potential responses. Hopefully they'll come back soon with a response. The response does need to be quick. In fact, they're already pressing businesses to pay workers who need time off. Wherever possible, support them. Full-time, part-time, casual. Tim Lester, seven rooms. Another major retail chain has crumbled with stationery brand Kiki K going into administration. Georgia Common Solely has this breaking news and Georgia, the brand has 65 stores across Australia. Mitch, this will be devastating news. The over 400 full-time employees working for the stationary empire, Kiki K was founded by Christina Carlson in 2001 and has its first store in Melbourne Central. The company has 140 stores across the world, including here in Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong and Singapore. But despite the growing trend of fashion and statement stationery, the Melbourne-based chain has become just another name on the growing list of retail organisations closing from the wider impact of the bushfires and now the coronavirus. Speech. Thanks, Georgia. Georgia Common Solely reporting. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are set to start their new lives after making one last appearance as senior royals. It was an awkward goodbye as they joined the family before their move to Canada. A celebration of 54 nations uniting 2.4 billion people, but all eyes were on just two. 682 days after she married into the family, Meghan and her prince arrived at the Commonwealth Day service for their final public duty. At Westminster Abbey, where the Queen was coronated, they joined the rest of the royals, all abiding by advice not to shake hands. Oh, yes, namaste. Very good. To avoid any awkwardness, the Sussexes in Cambridges were seated first. There was a brief, polite hello before the arrival of Her Majesty. Welcomed by the couple who seemed engaged, smiling, even nodding along to songs. You know, if you look back for the last 10 years, so many things happened that we didn't expect. And difference is always challenging, but it can be great. Relieved to be making their exit. So from March 31, Harry and Meghan will no longer use the titles His and Her Royal Highness. Out of the firm, but not the public eye, it's expected they'll make an announcement about their plans and brand in the coming weeks. There'll be a review in 12 months' time, but for now, there's no looking back. In London, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. Time for a look ahead to sport. Tim Watson, the AFL is launching its season under a big cloud tonight. That's right, Mitch. With or without the crowds, the AFL is pushing ahead to football reporter Mark Stevens is there. Tim, I'll have all the fallout from a massive day at AFL House as the league prepares for a silent start to the season. Plus, find out which big name skipper will miss round one and doesn't know when he'll be back. A Formula One world champion lends a helping hand to bushfire ravaged wildlife. And Mitch will tell you how alligator blood fared in the barrier draw for the All Star Mile. I'll be back soon. Okay, thanks very much, Tim. We'll see you then. 
Next, D-Day for Cardinal George Pell. He's fighting for his freedom in the High Court. Details live from Canberra next. Also, the chilling tribute as the trial gets underway into the murder of 298 people on board flight MH17. Where you can see Shane Warne's million-dollar baggy green in Melbourne. And going in style, Jane Bunn's weather live from the Melbourne Fashion Festival. Marco, what are you doing here? Would you forgive your brother if he tried to steal your wife? I'm not here to make trouble. Then why are you here? To finally heal this rift. You're not welcome here. I appreciate your support. Why would I help you? Better I haven't always seen eye to eye. It's the last thing I want to do. Ben, there's something I wanted to tell you for the past 20 years. Tell Ben that we slept together. Home and away this week on seven. It turns out a recycled clothes dryer, a Judas pool eater, and a meat grinder are the key ingredients for making a world beating rye whiskey. Visionaries still knock off around five, though. Why join Booper? Because you'll get six weeks free on eligible products. That's six weeks free. Because who doesn't love a great deal? Booper. Because life happens. Call Booper to find out more. Tease and supply. It's back. The epic audio sale at Harvey Norman. Epic deals across the big audio brands. Up to 15% off Sonos. Up to 15% off Bose. And a massive 20% off Clips and Yamaha. Epic savings. Up to 30% off JBL Bluetooth headphones. 20% off Beats headphones. Epic prices. JBL LinkView Google Voice Activated Speaker. Only $249, say $230. Deals so awesome, they're epic. Much more in store and online. Harvey Norman Epic Audio Sale on now. Thank <laughs> you.